it has taken a few weeks for this to come out in the world of Pac-12 football. Uh, the game between USC and Washington State on September the 21st. The uh, young quarterback of the Trojans, JT Daniels, against Washington State, goes down, takes a knee, clearly the play's over. And uh, Washington State linebacker, Logan Tago, hits him. And not only hits him, hits him with the helmet. Targeting's called on the field. The uh, ESPN broadcast is all over this saying that's a clear aspect of targeting. I mean, right. you know, player's already down, helmet hits. I mean, head-to-head, -head, it's simple. Knee could not have been more down. And in college football, that ends the play, right? And in, in NFL football, somebody takes a knee, they can get up and run. Right. Play's clearly over, it's definitely targeting, and then it comes back that after further review, the targeting has been lifted, not targeting. Like, what, what gives that front? Well, anyway, game goes on. Now comes out on Yahoo Sports that they have looked at the Pac-12 official game report in which all the plays uh, that were being officiated have a comment next to it, and this is the way that you check on your league's officiating. In this report about this hit, it says, the QB was on one knee when number 45 came from the outside, lowered and led with his helmet to the head of the quarterback. Both the replay booth and the command center, which is in, located in San Francisco, they have in Pac-12 set up the same way the NFL has it with a command center where right. trained referees and officials are making a call through the headset to the on-field officials. Both the replay booth and the command center agreed this was a targeting foul, but unfortunately, a third party did not agree. So the targeting was removed, and we went with the ruling on the field of no targeting. This didn't play well on TV. Reversed my stoppage for targeting to not targeting. That's in a game report. That's somebody wrote this to as like a, a stinking pile of poop bag to just make some sort of smell and stench to finally be found. And Yahoo Sports, Pete Thamel, found it. Now, who the hell is an outside third party saying what should be ruled right. on the field of play or not in a football game? Exactly. Well, Yahoo Sports says that this third party happened to be none other than the Pac-12 general counsel and senior vice president of business affairs named Woody Dixon. Are you telling me a lawyer? Somebody who's not a trained official? You might be trained in what, what, a, what a rule book says and how that works in terms of language, but that's, you're not a trained zebra. According to this story, Dixon telephoned in his opinion that the play wasn't targeting. According to the report, his opinion overruled both the trained officials in the stadium replay booth and in the league's command center. The replay booth and the official that night named Gary McNana was the one who wrote the internal report. Who well, didn't return any calls from Yahoo Sports seeking comment. In terms of the greater comments, two columns over, meaning how was this graded? Afterwards, right, it says correctly handled. What? <laughs> How? Pac-12 officiating. Every single time I go and complain about Big Ten officiating on Twitter, I get the response of essentially, hold my beer. The Pac-12 historically has been a total, absolute Bermuda's triangle of Poor officiating. It comes out of nowhere. You have no idea what's going on. And it makes people think something's up. That's the problem, is when officiating decisions are so bad and they're so poorly handled and they're so inconsistent, it makes you think something's not on the up and up here. And now here comes Yahoo Sports saying a lawyer? A suit? Sitting in maybe his... Wherever the heck he's sitting in his home at a party, maybe, who the heck knows, lifts a phone, calls the command center, and says, that's not targeting, I don't want it targeting? For what reason? 
I mean, for what reason? And how the hell is that possible? And I mean, seriously, you can't you can't sit here and think, well, that's normal. What 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 possible purpose should a, a member of a legal business affairs, a, a senior vice president of a league have any say in any real time adjudication of a football game? How the hell does that happen? And if people think something's fishy and stinky, how do we know this guy didn't have money on the game? I'm serious. Now, I don't, you know, I'm not saying the guy did. And I know that's a serious charge to level, but you've got to sit here and take everything into account and wonder what the hell is going on. This guy needs to come out today and say exactly why he thought that wasn't targeting and why he made that rule and where he called in from and why somebody in the booth at the command center doesn't tell this guy, you know what, you pound sand, sir. In no uncertain terms, hang up the phone and then deal with the ramifications of that afterwards. And if Larry Scott, the commissioner of Pac-12 football, says, how dare you not listen to Woody Dixon when he thinks something is not targeting or not, then you basically have to say, you know, what are we doing here? Why am I in this position here in a command center making this call? Now, Larry Scott has already said today that they have a very serious, they take this very seriously, and, and it's very important that, that, the, uh, that the refereeing is on the up and up, and he refutes the fact that a third party called in. Then Gary McNamara needs to be hauled in front of people, this gentleman who's a replay official who put in here saying that Basically, unfortunately, a third party did not agree, so the targeting was removed, and we went with the ruling on the field of RPS with no targeting. This play did not, this didn't play well on TV. Greg McElroy was calling the game, and yeah, he, no he, he lit it up. Reversed my stoppage. Wow. That's insane. Can the Pac 12 get any murkier and weirder when it comes to <laughs> officiating? Right. Somebody needs to be held to account here because I, I don't want to be watching a Pac-12 game and thinking, well, somebody just called in. Could you imagine? Could you imagine somebody has that ability to do that? Yeah, so and if that didn't happen, then why is this guy saying it did? Right. So Larry Scott this morning said, that, quote, we made a mistake implementing immediate changes. Yeah. A longer term review of the replay process that will include coaches. What the hell does that mean? How about we just take Woody Dixon's phone away from him? If that's what it is. And, and is that guy watching the game at home? I don't know. We need to know exactly what happened. They have got to come out and say exactly what happened. If it didn't happen this way, then what happened? Why was it written this way? That's just so outrageous. And it pisses me off because I love replay and I don't want replay to be thought at all other than what you see is what it is. And then if you do not see it that way, then it's human error. Not like some guy with a law degree and an SVP title calling in and saying, this is what I think. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.